welcome back to Kalita Tech. So as most of you probably know, I recently switched from Apple to Android in the smartphone market with the Google Pixel 2 XL. And as someone that had been using iOS for quite a few years from the, the iPod Touch into the iPhone 6S, I was actually a little bit worried that I would have a hard time getting used to the phone itself. Overall though, I've been extremely pleased. It's actually been a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. One of the first things I noticed about this phone when I got it out of the box was its size. It's just a lot bigger. That's the first thing I noticed. The screen size is bigger, the bezels are smaller. Uh, in fact, the entire success fit within the body of this screen. So the first thing I wanted to go over is the build quality. The, the unique look of this phone really stands out and they, they really do it well in the ads where they kind of pan around the phone. You look at this very unique black top bar that's here, the way it splits as kind of an accent and then goes into this matte black that I really enjoy. Uh, it's not as much of a fingerprint magnet as I thought it was gonna be. This matte black actually does very well. It's the glossy black surface that actually picks up more fingerprints around the camera. Placement of the fingerprint reader was something I was a little worried about when I first got the phone. You know, you switch from something like the iPhone, which has a, a dedicated fingerprint reader and home button on the bottom of the screen right in the middle. And I thought that would give uh, me a little bit of trouble trying to just get used to the placement and the, the natural, the ease of use that I was used to on the iPhone, just being able to put my finger right under the screen and it would unlock the phone. However, it's literally been no problem at all. I haven't had any problems getting used to it. In fact, my, that finger placement is right on the back of the phone anyway. So it's right there. I just put my finger there, unlock the phone, and it's extremely simple. It's also nice not having to use a gesture to unlock my phone. People have been very excited with the new iPhone 10, the Face ID. And while that's great and it has its uses and it has its benefits, it also requires an ad additional gesture. And that's something I think I would have a hard time getting used to, a hard time being okay with, is I can just literally hold my phone up, put my finger on the back of the screen, and it unlocks. So it's, it's very easy for me to get used to that process. So the next thing I wanna talk about with the, the build of the phone, the overall look, is just how, how well they've done making it look modern. It's a very sleek look, it's a very curved design, uh, and the way even the back looks, it, I'm very pleased with it. The camera bump is something they stuck with from the original Pixel, how the camera actually does come out of the back of the phone about two or three millimeters. That's something that a lot of people have pointed out as a downside to this phone uh, because it's not a completely flat back. I honestly don't care at all. The case I have actually, uh, which I've taken off for the review, but the case I have actually does cover it up to some extent, making it that it, the camera bump is actually lower than the case. So it really hasn't been a problem at all. The Google logo placement on the phone is actually really cool too. And I'm, this is not something that's a, a real big deal, but just having that on the back of the phone in a minimalistic sort of way is a really good way for Google to kind of brand themselves instead of it being right in the middle of the back, like on the iPhone. I really also enjoy the buttons. They're actually surprisingly clicky. They're satisfying to use. The volume buttons are, uh, they're nice to press. And even with Bluetooth headphones, Bluetooth uh, earbuds that I've recently purchased the buttons. I still find myself using the buttons on the phone rather than the buttons on the headphones. You'll notice I did bring up Bluetooth earbuds. This phone does not have a headphone jack. And that's something that a lot of people uh, were very upset about. I was actually one of that crowd noticing the switch from having a headphone jack to not having a headphone jack that uh, Apple actually pioneered. People were up in arms about it. I actually told myself I would never buy a phone without a headphone jack. And uh, here I am with the Google Pixel. So I'm actually really surprised with the way I've gotten used to having the Bluetooth earbuds. And the battery life on this phone is actually so amazing. I've never had myself uh, worry about the you know using the same port for both audio and charging i've never had to worry about that problem transitioning onto the display itself it's absolutely visually stunning it's a 1440p po led display that actually uh it's like i said it's about 6.2 inches which is a lot larger than what i was used to on the 6s the entire body of the 6s was about six inches but having that overall screen real estate is really something i've gotten used to and i'm very pleased with there are some negatives with the screen however people have been talking about how this is not a samsung oled display samsung for as long as they've been making oled displays has been kind of the cutting edge of that technology whether it's been the mobile form factor or the large size form factor like televisions and things like that this display is made by LG. I have noticed some problems with it within the first month or so of having the phone. There is a slight blue shift and that basically means turning colors blue as you rotate the display. However, that part of it hasn't really bothered me much because I'm usually looking at my display head on and I'm not looking at it from angles. So it really doesn't matter to me a whole lot what it looks like from the side. However, what I have noticed and it's mostly noticeable on a, a gray background as you kind of zoom into a gray picture 
which I'll show on screen here, there's a little bit of a burn in with the uh, always on buttons on screen. You know, like I said, there's no home button. Uh, so the dedicated software buttons are at the bottom and the home, the back and the multitasking buttons are all at the bottom there. And since they're always on and it is an OLED display, there has been some burn in with those buttons, but that's really been the only screen problems I've noticed so far. Moving from the screen to the camera. The camera I think is this phone's absolute strongest talking point. It is, uh, according to DxO Mark, still even after the release of the iPhone 10, the single best mobile still camera on the market. And uh, the overall score is also higher, but this phone's camera is absolutely phenomenal. We did a full camera review, which you can check out here, uh, just comparing the iPhone 10 and the Google Pixel. But the big talking points I wanna hit are the HDR, the high dynamic range on this camera. Are at, it's absolutely phenomenal. The autofocus is good. The auto exposure could use a little bit of help, but does very well as well. And then the portrait modes are actually so much better than Apple's. It's uh, accomplished with software rather than Apple has the hardware. Um, the only difference between the two actually that you notice is that the edges on the pixel, the, the blurred edges, the, the fake bokeh, if you will, and supply to these images is so much better on the Pixel than it is on the iPhone 10. Transitioning from the camera to the software, one of the things I wanted to talk about is transitioning from iOS, which is something I used for many years, like I said, from the iPod, the iPhone, even getting used to the watch iOS for the month or so I had it, uh, into the Android suite, the Android software, the Android OS. This phone runs Android 8.0 Oreo, which is Android's newest mobile operating system. I've actually been extremely pleased with it. The customization for me is something that I'm not used to. Switching from uh, Apple, who really kind of locks down their software, being able to, you know, even little things like moving folders around. I can put a folder somewhere and it's not going to auto snap to, you know, the next available spot. It can stay where I put it and then downloading different customization profiles and being able to program the phone essentially to do with it exactly what I need to do with it, uh, you know, default launchers and things like that. There's a lot I haven't even been able to explore within Android that really, I really enjoy more, if you will, than the, the software experience that I got from Apple. One of the most important things that I've been pleased with with this phone and that I've gotten used to as using this phone as my daily driver is the Google Suite integration. Now, Google seemed to realize when they uh, basically implemented the Google Suite onto this phone that people who are using the Google Suite will have different accounts that they're using for different things, even in their daily work life, whether it's a work account, a school account, a personal account, or in my case, you know, the YouTube account. Being able to switch between different Google accounts at the touch of a, a button on an app is absolutely amazing. Being able to use things like Google Keep and Google Docs. Uh, Google Photos, Google Maps integration even. I can just talk to my Google Assistant and it can pull things up from that entire list of the Google Suite. The fact that I'm now using you know, Google Calendar, Google Drive, even the unlimited cloud storage that comes with Google Photos, they've just done an excellent job. And using this phone in a day-to-day -day use, whether it be um, for driving or uh, in school or things like that, I've just been very pleased with what this phone has to offer from a software perspective. So when it comes to hardware on this phone, it does actually have four gigabytes of RAM compared to the three gigabytes on the iPhone 10. However, the iPhone 10's processor is significantly higher in, uh, in basically core speed and overall performance than the uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 that's in here. A, uh, Apple's A11 Bionic chip does outperform this phone. However, that doesn't really matter in day-to-day -day use because stock Android, or mostly stock Android, as it's, so it's been tweaked a little bit by Google, but mostly stock Android requires a lot less performance to actually run in day-to-day -day use than iOS does. In my day-to-day -day use, I haven't noticed any stuttering. I haven't noticed any slowdowns or anything like that. The battery life on it is great, and this processor actually does support up to one gigabit per second download speeds, which is absolutely huge for a mobile device with a chip that's probably no bigger than my thumbnail. One of the last things I want to talk about is the battery life on this phone. Coming from a two-year-old iPhone that I was lucky to get three to four hours of full screen on time at full brightness in a daily workload, this phone absolutely blows my mind. I'm able to get about 18 to 19 hours of full usage, not screen on time, but just usage of the phone in a single day without having to charge it. And it charges up to 50% in about 20 minutes. So from a completely dead state to halfway charged, which gives me probably three or four hours of screen on time, I'm able to get 
a lot of use out of the battery on this phone. So closing thoughts, who is this phone for and why should you buy it? First of all, you know, I'm a college student. I've been extremely pleased with this phone, but one of the main reasons I am pleased with this phone is because it integrates so well with the ecosystem that I already operate within. So I have built my own desktop, that video is on the channel, you can check it out here. I've also recently purchased the Asus ZenBook just as my daily driver laptop to take to classes and do light homework on and things like that. Having this phone, which is integrated with the Google Suite, which I can download apps that now allow me to text and call from my computer, or even being able to control my computer from the phone with the Chrome remote desktop is absolutely amazing. The ease of life, the quality of life, the ease of use that this phone provides within my daily use case absolutely blows the iPhone out of the water. And again, that's unique to me because of what I already have. If you have a MacBook, if you have uh, a Mac Pro, if you have an iPad, those kind of things are already within your ecosystem and those are what you use, maybe the iPhone's better for you because you're able to sync all of your stuff across multiple devices. However, I didn't have any of that. I'm able to take notes on my laptop, open them on my desktop, and control my desktop from my phone if I have to. Being able to transfer files or email things to myself or even just file sharing uh, while I'm at my computer to the phone. So in closing, uh, I really, really do appreciate this phone. I would definitely recommend it to anybody who's looking for a new smartphone, a new daily driver to kind of get them through whatever they need to, be it uh, a commute to work or just daily phone use for apps and social media, or even as a productivity tool. I've used it for all three and I would definitely recommend it for all of those things. So thanks for checking out this review of Google's new Pixel 2. For similar videos and other tech reviews, including an iPhone 10 full review we'll be uploading within the next couple of days, definitely check out the rest of our channel. Leave a thumbs up if you appreciated it. Leave a comment as well down in the comment section. We'll get back to you with any questions you have or any comments you have on this phone. Thanks for watching.